views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. You know what? Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Uh, this is Talk Radio to Thrive By. And, you know, we talk about everything, uh, you know, from sex to spirituality, but it's how we talk about it. Uh, someone asked me the other day what the Dr. Pat Show was about and how is it different from TransformationRadio.fm. And I said, you know, the only difference is I'm the host, TransformationRadio.fm has a lot of hosts with a lot of good things to say. Uh, and, and every one of us has our own unique special gifts that we bring into the world. Now, for example, Mr. Benny. Mr. Benny pushes all the right buttons. And a few right? bad ones from time to time. It happens. We're all human. It happens. Yeah. It happens. I it accept happens. it. I accept and, it. And if anybody ever saw your workstation, I, <laughs> I'll call it a workstation or PlayStation, whatever you want to call it. If anybody ever saw that, they would understand and think to themselves, how does he actually push the right buttons with all of that stuff going on? Practice, practice, practice. There you go. That's the secret right there. It is, isn't it? Uh, and, and a good memory. And a good, great memory. Great memory. Great memory. Phenomenal memory. Phenomenal memory. <laughs> Out we, of this world. Out memory. of this world memory. Yeah. And the ability to multi-process. I'm like an octopus. Yep. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I've been told well, that. Well, then this show's for you. Yeah, Today's perfect. Show's... Yeah. Uh, welcome, everybody. We've got a great show. I'm so thrilled to have Dr. Dr. Susan Edelman joining me here today. We're going to talk about, you know, a new sexual revolution. Yeah? Do you think? What do you think? Is it on the way? Is it here? How can you be your own brand of sexy? What is this new sexual revolution for women all about? And how is it different than perhaps maybe the revolution that I thought I went through, uh, you know, back in the day, as we like to say, love that term, back in the day, uh, you know, because this is a whole new way of looking at things. I remember a couple of years ago when we interviewed Gloria Steinem, who I met back in the 80s, let's say, um, but we, we interviewed her. And one of the questions that one of the listeners asked her was, Okay, what do you think about the way young women are showing up today, the clothes they're wearing, and so forth and so on? And shocking to many people what she said, and I'm going to paraphrase. She said, you know, we stand on the shoulders of all that have come before, and there's something we're going to be learning about these women. So today, hopefully we're going to get some insight into what this means to bring our own brand of sexy to the forefront and how is that relative to the world we live in today? You know, what is it that keeps us hanging on by a thread to that next amazing thing we'd like to do or express through ourselves? And, you know, today in the world we live in, if you don't, if, if any of us don't think we have ha we're having some kind of revolution going on here, especially with our ability to accept and view love in many, many ways, then all you need to do is look at the headlines and look at what's not being talked about today. What are we not talking about today? What are we allowing to enter into our consciousness and making it no big deal? Today, Dr. Susan Edelman is joining me here today. Be your own brand of sexy. And why is this important? 
Well, she has seen more more people than many of us even know about in our lifetimes for close to 30 years. And, you know, this amazing psychiatrist has been here and around the block a few times so that she has been able to look inside the hearts, the minds, and, you know, I would even say sometimes the soul of women to find out what the heck they are not getting. They're not getting. And so what is it we're going to learn today about this new sexual revolution and why women, even today, after all we have been through, still are not getting the love? Dr. Susan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Pat. It's so great to be here with you. That's a great introduction. I want, to, I want to talk a little bit. I know we're going to talk a lot about the book, but this is really related to the book. You know, it was interesting when I had Gloria on the show not too long ago, and, and people were waiting for her to say something like, oh, they need to cover themselves up. And she's saying, you know, I'm learning something from these women. Um, what are some of the misconceptions that we have right now about bringing, our, bringing the sexy back? You know, the the old sexual revolution and the women's movement promised more choices. But women today are as confused as ever because we went from if you have sex before marriage, you're a tramp, to if you're a virgin, you're a prude. So we've forgotten the meaning of liberation, which is the freedom to choose for yourself. So we need a new revolution that encourages each woman to decide what's best for her regardless of what our culture tells us is normal. And that's what being our own brand of sexy is about. Do you think we have gotten confused about um, what it means to allow ourselves to fully express sexually? Yes, I really do. (laughs) I think that um, a lot of women think we have more power if if we're going to be sexy and sexual. Mm -hmm. But real power is about knowing what's right for you as an individual. And some of those messages are very harmful to people when they believe them. Yeah. And it's also very hard to stand up for yourself in a culture that's saturated with sex like ours is. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. You know, I want to ask you, uh, for you personally, a couple of, 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 of questions about your own journey. Because, you know, you are well established. I mean, you are, uh, a, you, you know, you're an associate professor at Stanford. You, you know, you are in the Department of Psychiatry. You're tapped into behavioral sciences. You probably have looked at more research than most people even know how to say the word. But all of this, right? began at a point and is leading you and me to this conversation today what was the tip what's a tip it it is was there a tipping point for you and what I mean by that is you you know sometimes I wake up and a light bulb goes on and it's like 10 watts right a 10 watt light bulb other days I wake up and it's like oh my gosh this is a floodlight hitting me what was this like for you this journey to to really take this conversation on I'm so glad you're asking me this because every day in my practice as a psychiatrist treating men and women, I listen to women tell me how they don't get what they want from men and how incredibly painful that is. And then one young friend of mine crystallized it. I'm going to call her Emma to protect her privacy, but Emma went off to college and called me for advice, and the guys were asking her to come over and hang out. And she said, Susan, what does that mean? And I'm supposed to be this expert, and I wasn't quite sure, but it turns out hanging out for a lot of these guys meant casual sex, and that wasn't what she wanted, so she held out for a guy to treat her with respect and didn't have much of a chance to learn about dating or relationships, and I loved college dating, Dr. Pat, so this broke Mm -hmm. my heart, and I started to wonder what had happened to Mm -hmm. courtship and romance, because this was not what we had in mind with the women's movement and the sexual revolution, we thought women would be treated better when we were seen as equals, not that many men would simply take casual sex for granted. And Emma said to me, Susan, you have to do something about this. And I was determined to figure out 
how we got here and what we could do about it. And I wrote my book to support the women who would never walk through my office door but need a helping hand. And maybe some of your listeners fall into that category. Are you kidding? You know, all of us <laughs> fall into that category because, you know, um, we're going to take a short break. But what I want to say about what you just shared is, first of all, thank you. Thank you for sharing this um, and sharing, you, you, you know, from the heart about this. Because what we've discovered in this world, this is our 13 year, 13th year doing a form of radio that people said we'd have all about 13 minutes. We'd have our 13 minutes, what I call that, 13 minutes of fame, and then nobody would listen. We found out a month ago when a study, of course, we love research, don't we, us people? When a study was done, first time ever the study was done, in, in, in this venue. And what they said was, and you're going to love this, Dr. Susan, what they said was, oopsie, we have not been counting like a segment of the population that actually is high tech and plugs in and listen to this type of talk radio and podcasting. And then I, then the punchline came. You ready? Women. <laughs> Women. Oh, wait a minute. And moms over 35. That is not the demographic that these folks sell to, but they've been our listeners for over 12 years. And I'm so glad, finally, that we are not only being counted, but our listeners are some of the best on the planet. You know what else they've said? They're affluent, and they're well-educated, and they want to grow, and they want conversations like you and I are having today. Because we're all pretty confused about what the heck to do and how the heck to do it. But I'm so glad. Dr. Susan Edelman joining me here today. We are talking about Be Your Own Brand of Sexy. This is a new sexual revolution for women. But when we come back, we're going to talk about what that means. Not only are we going to talk about what it means, but her book is amazing. It's amazing. What is it about us that is just very shy about not only knowing we have a choice, But we also have a right to the way we want to be treated. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with the show. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. Tune in to the hit show Master's Chambers with your trusted friend, Connie Fife. Mondays, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Each week, Connie will connect you with the best of the best thought leaders from around the globe to share their strategies and best practices. Getting better together. To book Connie, visit ConnieFifeSpeaks.com. We spend nearly a third of our life on the astral plane. Why not leverage it? Go deeper and learn more with Len Brown and Wendy R. Wolf. Join us at the DeBuddha Playhouse and Cafe in Bellevue, August 11th from 6 to 7 p.m. for basic tools and 7 to 9 p.m. for astral body basics. For more information, email lynn at letter r, letter u, intuit.com or visit the website at letter r, letter u, intuit.com. Called the Oprah of Radio by her listeners. Award winning host Dr. Pat Basili is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the drpatshow.com. That's T H E D R Pat Show.com for listening times in your area. Holistique Medical Center is where you find it all. A healthy space with doctors who care, see, and listen to the whole you. Hi, this is Dr. Darvish. If you have not found an answer to your chronic symptoms, you will find answers here at Holistique Medical Center. 
Our doctors find the root cause of your symptoms and guide your body towards healing naturally. We transform lives from within. Visit drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. Naturopathic doctor, founder of the Martha's Vineyard Holistic Retreat, and author of the New York Times bestseller, 21 Pounds in 21 Days, Dr. Ronnie Deleuze has helped tens of thousands of people, including celebrities and athletes, with her message of lifestyle change. Now, Dr. Ronnie Deleuze wants to help you. You, too, can be saved. Email Dr. Ronnie Deleuze at info at ronniedeleuzeonradio.com and visit mvholisticretreat.com. Dr. Ronnie Deleuze, your partner in wellness. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to the show. This is the Dr. Pat Show, Talk Radio to Thrive By. If you want to find out more about us, really easy. You can go to Facebook, the Dr. Pat Show, Twitter, the Dr. Pat Show, uh, of the Dr. Pat Show.com, or you can go to TransformationTalkRadio.com. Thanks for tuning us in. I want to make sure you also know how to get a hold of or find out more about Dr. Susan Edelman. If you go to the website uh, that I have here, be your own brand of sexy. Dot com. Be your own brand of sexy dot com. Um, it, it's going to be just go and check it out. Not only that, you're going to be able to take a look at what we're talking about here today, be able to get a copy of the book, look at what folks are saying about it. And I got to tell you, this is a happy website. This is like one of the happiest websites that I've come to. It's got that real happy vibe to it. Uh, And you'll find out that this is, uh, you know, this book is, you know, a book award winner, first place in relationships, and there's a reason for it. Um, Dr. Susan, it's so great to have you here on the show. Um, I wanted to talk with you about, uh, about kind of the state of affairs and to ask you to give us a snapshot of of where the old revolution was, what happened to it, and and what you see as a call to action for this new sexual revolution for women. That's a great question, Dr. Pat. I'm so excited to be talking to you about this. Yeah. Clearly, the women's movement and the sexual revolution were a tremendous leap forward for equality and freedom from inhibition. Mm-hmm. And there's no doubt that that they were amazing, but in a way they've they've changed the landscape of what we're dealing with because they set in motion a chain of events that really turned the way we date and relate upside down, mm-hmm. and that much change can be confusing. So now we're all pioneers trying to explore this strange new territory really without a map or a guide or with lots of conflicting maps and guides. So we each have to develop a strong inner compass to help us navigate this journey. And that means being your own brand of sexy, figuring out what you want, what works for you as an individual, and what strategies can help you achieve your relationship goals, whatever they may be. One of the terms I, I love that you use in the book, and you also use it on your website, and I, and I would be, I would regret not asking you to talk about it and have a conversation with about it. One of the things that I love that you did bring forward that I recall from 1969 when I burned my bra, just saying that that happened. But one of the things that you I burned loved, your bra, or, uh, you're looking at one right here. <laughs> that, that be, remember, I lived in New Jersey, Atlantic City, right? Um, but I had a sense back then of why I did it. And we are far away from that time in many ways. In other ways, no. But the word you use in the book is sisterhood. And I love, love, love that word. And I haven't really seen it used or have seen someone articulate it in the way that you talk about it. Um, especially when you're talking about to be your own brand of sexy, Right. And then now we're saying the word sisterhood, and I thought, oh, my gosh, this is so absolutely 
uh, it, it connects us in so many ways. I'd love for you to talk about that because I think you use it as, well, this is me. It seems like it's one of the pillars of what you're writing about here. You're right. So the revolution is being your own brand of sexy and sisterhood because really it may not even work that we can change ourselves if we don't change our culture and, and if women don't stick together because, well, well you've seen it. Mm-hmm. Have, have you seen this beautiful actress, Christina Hendricks? She's that voluptuous, red-headed yeah. siren on Ooh. Mad Men. Yeah. So she's gorgeous, and people are calling her fat simply yeah. because she's not a size zero or two like the rest of the women in Hollywood. And who is pressuring her to adapt to these unrealistic standards and saying she could be a better sex object than she already is? It's women. Men don't seem to have a problem with her. So we have to support each other in doing what's right for each of us as individuals instead of exerting pressure to conform. We we need sisterhood. So if you could just imagine what would happen if we could start a new revolution and make being your own brand of sexy and sisterhood the new cultural expectations, we we would protect our hearts so we didn't have to spend so much time being confused about men and getting over heartbreak. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have to worry quite so much about whether we're fat and how to be better sex objects. And we'd begin to expect acceptance and respect rather than judgment and heartache. Seems like we'd be a whole lot happier and have so much more time and energy for something bigger than ourselves. Yeah, I love what you say. You know, I read you stand together, you support your sister's choices, and you respect your sisters. And I will tell you that out of the out of the um, the revolution that we you and I referred to back, you know, decades ago, this has been the one major obstacle. You know, many people think that this has really died down. That women do stick together today, but when when this was all emerging. This was so not the case. Women did not respect each other. They did not support each other. And they were more confused then than ever. And and it's so interesting to hear you talk about it. I, what do you think the challenge is? What, what is the obstacle for us in, in kind of holding hands and standing together? Because I've seen my male counterparts, and I'm not, you know, I don't gener- generalize mostly, but I've seen men come together in ways that are indescribable. And I wonder, have we not learned how, you know, where is the disconnect? Well, I watched this program on the 70s the other day, and, <laughs> and I watched how how they were talking about how women were the the housewives who were happy being housewives and mothers in the 60s and 70s were threatened, right? Because women are, the, the new revolution was saying, you know, we don't have to do this. This isn't good for women. Well, some women liked it. So I think we split off into, you know, fractions a little bit about, and maybe there's a whole competitive element to these things especially with looking good, right? I mean, you have to look good because you're competing with other women. So women are, uh, express their competitiveness differently than men do, and this may be what it is by criticizing each other. Yeah. I love what you talk about here because you also talk about, you know, the idea of responsibility to each other. Let's talk about that, you know, because I really think that this is such an important point you make about each of us having responsibility. I have responsibility, you know, to you as a woman, you have responsibility to me as a woman. I would love for you to talk about what that has come to mean for you and for the people you work with. The responsibility is to be able to be supportive and open Mm -hmm. and to hear what your friend or your sisters are thinking because in a way our culture is really polarized and we don't hear somebody who's more conservative, talk about things. We tune it out a lot of times if we're liberal and mm-hmm. vice versa. Mm-hmm. And But that's even changed in the last 50 years because I think people may have been more open in some ways to each other. But I think the, the major thing in the sexual and dating arena that I'm concerned about is these women who are 
hooking up and they don't feel good about it and and they tell their friends who say well that's normal you know it's no big deal or something and yeah. And and don't really hear that maybe what some of these women are doing isn't the right thing for them. And they're not helping them figure out, well, you know, if this doesn't work for you, if you don't feel comfortable with this, don't do it. I think there's so much pressure on a lot of people to think they have more power if they have casual sex or that this is better for them. And And people don't necessarily realize that everybody's different. Yeah. And that's the most important thing that I think is the message here is we've got to realize we're all different and we're beautiful in those differences. Now, I love I love the way you've written this book and I love what you talk about. I mean, there's so many things you and I can can really talk about throughout the book. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, you know, Dr. Susan really takes us on a journey. And for those of you just tuning in, Be Your Own Brand of Sexy is the book, A New Sexual Revolution for Women. Dr. Susan um, Edelman joining me here today. When we come back, what we're going to talk about is our heart. You know, what role does our heart play? What role does our mind play? And how do we know which to choose for which choice. Let's take a short break, everyone. We'll be right back. I got the call today. I didn't want to hear, but I knew that it would come. Enlightening, humorous, and compassionate. Listen live to The Kelly Ballard Show, insight and inspiration from the great beyond. Kelly is a fourth-generation medium and intuitive who covers topics ranging from grief, spirit guides, and listening to your intuition. Kelly can help you get answers and guidance from the other side with a little bit of humor and a lot of healing. Tune in to The Kelly Ballard Show, Thursdays at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Calling all dreamers. Are you living your dream life? Actualize your possibilities with Life Coaching Radio and your host, Deb Stetzer. If you're feeling stuck in a rut, Deb is here to help you turn your dreams into a reality. Life Coaching Radio. Dream it, live it, be it. To learn more about Deb, visit www.mylifecoach.us. in to Sheer Alchemy with Leslie Fontaine on TransformationTalkRadio.com and get ready to stir up your passions, identify your blocks, and shift into an entirely new existence. Leslie Fontaine is a transformation catalyst and clairvoyant who uses her intuitive and energetic gifts to catapult listeners into living the life they were born to live. Whether it's shifting from scarcity to abundance, from emotional pain into joy, or from illness into health, Health. Leslie will help you step into the true essence and power of all that you are with the help of the Ascended Masters and Archangels. You will not be the same. Visit TransformationTalkRadio.com for show dates and times and LeslieFontaine.com to say yes to explosive abundance. Each month, listen to Live More Radio with co-host Ali Katz. Join Ali and Dr. Pat as Ali introduces new ways to bring balance back to your life through meditation, sleep, and exercise techniques so you can live your truly authentic life. Stress less. Live more. To learn more about Ali, visit livemoreradio.com. Side loves open door. 
biggest love I can tame it and beg for something more. I've been learning to live without you now, but I miss you sometimes. The more I know, the less I understand all the things I thought I knew. I'm learning. Wow. Thank you, Benny. Great song. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to Dr. Pat Show. Be your own brand of sexy.com. That's how you can find out more about the book. That's how you can find out more about sisterhood. That's how you can find out more about, you know, what it means to protect our hearts. And our voice does matter. Um, you know, this book, I could see why this book has won multiple awards because it's not only comprehensive, you know, but it's really a journey. You know, it talks about everything from the power keg you know to bringing Sir Galahad back from the dead yes the dead uh, if you don't think uh, Sir Galahad is dead you know ask yourself the question when might been the last time that door been open for you um, it, I have to I'm shocking myself here Dr. Susan I'm shocking myself you know because I went through generation and generation of do not open that door for me and, and there was a time and a place for that. I really do believe that. There was a time and a place for that level of extreme um, to, to really create not a shift in consciousness, but a, a clearly a revolution at that time. We're in a different time now. And I would love for you to talk about, you know, what happens to the minds you know, it, what is going on in the mind of women right now? How, how they're handling everything from sex to dating and where the conundrum is between the mind and the heart sometimes, if you could talk to that, because it is really baffling. You know, I, I hear and I know you do. Women are making choices that they don't even remember making. It, it, they're like, did I just do that? So how do we bring these two conversations together between mind and heart? That's such a great question. I, I have a story that's yeah. kind of a composite story that maybe your listeners will like that'll make this a little more real for them. Um, so it's, it's a composite story of patients and friends and that not about a particular person because I'm concerned about privacy issues, but... Laurel was dating Dan and hoped he'd bring up the subject of monogamy, but he never did, and her friends advised her not to bring it up and scare him off. So Dan acted like they were a couple, so Laurel was really surprised when she ran into him with another woman. And at first she was mad at him because it seemed like he was cheating, but then she realized it never clarified whether or not they were exclusive before they had sex. Mm. And so Laurel wonders, you know, I'm a modern woman. What's wrong with me? Why do I get so attached? And this story is so common. In the past, you know, the man had to bring up, <clears throat> excuse me, commitment, which eventually led to sex and marriage. But today we have no rules to guide women or men about how or when to broach this subject. So mm -hmm. many couples are confused about it. And then so many women think it's not okay to let your expectations be known because commitment might be scary for men but when women avoid this subject they're often vulnerable to these unpleasant surprises so many women today think the only protections they need are condoms and birth control pills so they don't even think about protecting their hearts and then so many see the feelings of attachment they experience with sex as the problem but we're built for attachment we're just no longer honoring the way we're built and part of the problem here is that we think we think we should be able to overcome that because our culture is glamorizing this microwave romance thing, which is, you know, a romance that progresses at lightning speed and it typically explodes in your face. But a five-star restaurant doesn't prepare meals in a microwave and some of your listeners probably want a five-star romance and if so... The microwave really isn't your answer because faster doesn't equal better. Great relationships take time to evolve, and it often doesn't work to rush that process. But we think it should because modern life is telling us that it's everywhere. Sex sells, so we, 
we want to be normal and we tell ourselves, well, how much sex is normal? If I have it less than four times a week, is there something wrong with me? And, you know, do I need to lose weight or get breast implants if I don't have a boyfriend? So the saturation of sex in our culture is pressuring us to look and act sexy or sexual, and then we're confused about what's right. And Sexual you know, freedom is confusing. Yeah, this is not just a, you know, let's just talk about the magnitude of this. You know, because what we're talking about, something that is beyond, like, you know, information, we're talking about obsession in a lot of cases here. Um, and what do I mean by that? And I'd love for you to talk upon, uh, about it. Um, you know, we are in a multi-level uh, uh, arena here of obsession. And, you know, and I don't like to use that word, but I don't know how else to describe it. I had a, um, um, a friend of mine, a male friend of mine, t- you know, talk to me and he said, you know, I know you did that show on, what did he call it? He, he, he didn't outright say, he said, I know you did that show on internet addiction. That's what he called it, internet addiction. And I said, yeah, I did do that show. He said, could you send that to me? I said, Sure. And in my mind, I didn't say what I really wanted to say and ask him about. But there is all levels of obsession that are happening within people today. And women are not exempt from it. Do we even know that we're in that realm of obsession? Obsession with sexuality? Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah. 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 With sexuality, lack thereof sexuality. You know, I mean, there are some women that don't even, bringing the sexy back is not even in their arena. I think you're right. I think we we aren't aware of it. And that's part of the reason for this book is to help people become more aware of it because you're not going to feel like you have choices if yeah. you feel like that's the norm and you've got to fit in. And so many women are people pleasers, but it's beyond that because all the studies say that people are influenced by what other people are doing and that they're very unaware that they're influenced by them so that so that it it's a it's a complete unawareness people are oblivious to it so they act thinking well this is the norm and i don't have a choice that's the way it is i've heard that so often i have to ask you this question how much shame are we experiencing right now as women? I mean, don't you think we have all of the above going on? I don't know. Uh, you know, sometimes I don't sleep well at night because, you know, I'm, I'm doing some things with my brain, you know, trying to get some things, you, you know, resolved. And at night it's quiet. But if I turn the TV on, I know I'm going to get the cream that's going to make me look 20 again. I know it. I know that I'm going to be like right there and I'm going to buy that cream and I'm going to put that cream on. Or wait a minute. Let me take a pill now to help me with this other thing. Uh, But most importantly, that great bikini that you're showing me right there, you know, you know, so what's happening is the sense for me is I'm looking for the ways to help myself feel better about who I am. And I'm not sure that they're out there. So how do you work with women to see the beauty within well, I think teasing out the culture is really important because what I've understood is that we have the most unrealistic ideal body image today than we've ever had. And probably because so there's so much airbrushing and plastic surgery out there that it, it changes what the new norm is and makes it impossible for the average woman to get that. Kim Kardashian probably has you know, things done to her, and a lot of these women do. So if that's our ideal, we're always going to feel like we're falling short. There there are some surveys that were done about how women feel about their bodies, and they ranged from 50% to like 90% of women who are unhappy with how they look. Mm -hmm. And that's huge. Mm Mm-hmm. But don't you think that's, you know, more of the norm than it is the exception? You know, I, I, I mean, I think that, you know, what I'm, what I'm asking you about is there is a level of things that, that women are feeling today and sensing today. And for whatever reason, maybe peer pressure, um, we try to fit in the best we could, even if it doesn't, even if it's not a good fit for us. 
and I, in, in the book you talk about this in a number of different places, uh, but I think most importantly, you know, when you talk about there's nothing to fear but fear itself, um, that is to me one of the most interesting parts that I'm looking at for women because there are so many levels of fear. You, t- you talk about Fifty Shades of Grey. I think we got about Fifty Shades of Fear right now going on with relationships and love and dating. And, you know, let's talk about how that fear then shows up in the way we behave in the world. I think you're so right. We're afraid of losing someone if we stand up for ourselves or we're afraid of someone judging us. If, if we say, you know, I'm not into casual sex or mm-hmm. I don't think that plan works for me. I don't want to drive all the way an hour to see this guy, you know, or this is not my idea of a good date. Or they call it the last minute They're, or paying on a date. So many women want the guy to pay, but they feel like I'm a modern woman. You know, I should I should be splitting it. So mm-hmm. women aren't tuning in to what's right for them. They're afraid they're going to lose the guy or they're afraid they're not going to be modern and people will make fun of them or judge them. And it, 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 it's unfortunate. So people need to do what's best for them as individuals. If, if a guy isn't going to respect your voice, these are, the, these are the guidelines of being your own brand of sexy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if a guy isn't respecting your voice, you have to move on. Because this isn't the right guy for you. I love what you said earlier because it really does tie into how we can help each other, you know, and part of this. What I love about the world we live in today is when I was growing up, we didn't, pa- we weren't able to plug into television shows that talked about this, a radio show like this, and maybe or maybe not, I'd find out about this book that you were written. But today we have so many resources. How do we work with women to help them even get to the resource so that they can build up their 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 voice uh, power, how they could vi- build up information and explore what's going on in their lives without the guilt and shame? Because the guilt and shame just gives us more guilt and shame. And I know you have created a, a venue for women to do that. Um, I'm just curious to see where women where women could start. You know, there's there's a lot of resources online for this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm getting on social media, trying to figure out all the all the other people who have a similar message to me, and I also am um, have a blog and trying to figure out how to get the message out. So this social media is amazing for this Facebook and. Twitter and Pinterest and Instagram, there's a lot of people on there encouraging women to support each other in these ways. And and so people can can get the information they need pretty easily. Yeah. And I just want to tell everybody, if you want to follow, if you want to follow Dr. Susan on Twitter, let me tell you how to do it. Go to twitter.com, brand of sexy. Uh, if you want to check out Dr. Susan on Facebook, like I just did, uh, you can go to Facebook.com, be your own brand of sexy, and there you are. Um, and what I love about that is, oh, look, we have a post right there. How cool is that? Um, and, you know, what's going to happen is I think what we'll do after the show is we'll take the, you know, edit this show and put it up. But you're right about this. Um, I, I want to talk to you. I skipped the break just in case you're wondering. I want to talk about um, if we could dating for a minute. Clearly, this is a venue that has changed dramatically in the past 10 years. And there was not a training manual for it. I, I'm just saying I don't have like a training manual for the online dating. And it's not just online dating for people in their 20s, women in their 20s. We're talking about dating at every age. And I can't wait to hear what you're going to tell me about dating, especially online dating. It seems to be almost the only game in town right now. (laughs) Well, I think online dating is great. I think you just have to be a little more self-protective. Maybe even if you meet someone at a party and you chat with them, because 
I don't think it's good for a lot of these guys are like, okay, let's meet up. You know, when are you available? And they're doing that online. And I think it's better to talk with someone on the telephone first and have a real conversation before you go and meet them to make sure it's even worth your time and that the guy's even interested enough to try and talk, talk to you on the phone. I mean, it's, it's really important to be selective about who you go out with because if, if they're not going to jump through a couple of hoops at, at when they're at their best trying to make the absolute best impression, it's only going downhill from there. And I think that's what women forget because women are, a lot of women, not all women, are very excited if there's a new guy they're interested in and they're not necessarily thinking, you know, let me get to know this guy and figure out if he's right for me. And I think that's a better mindset when you first start out than, oh, he's so hot and, you know, let's go make out or something because you don't know what you're getting in for and and our bodies are built for attachment and so it puts you at risk. So why not get to know the guy to see if he's even worth getting getting sexually involved with or whatever whatever you're looking for. When we're looking at the scheme of things here, what's our end game? What are we ultimately looking for? And what happens to us, Dr. Susan, when, you know, we're looking, 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 we think we're on the right track, and then we get something that we didn't absolutely look for or actually want. And, you know, I don't know, have you heard that story more often than not? You know, this is what I was looking for, but wait a minute, Dr. Susan, this is what I got. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got this thing. I've, I've heard that story a lot about, you know, not finding out enough about the person before you get involved. And the other story that I hear so much is that women let men take them for granted and don't realize how important it is to know how to say yes to what you want and no to what you don't want. So a lot of women have trouble saying no, and it's a serious problem because even if you meet a good guy, he can end up taking you for granted if you let that happen and you can't say no, and then you don't get what you want. Wow. In, you know, in the world we live in, and I know this time is going quickly, in the world we live in, we have learned much. And you have seen countless people um, and have helped countless women. And, you know, we're sitting here talking today about so many things, everything from looking at, as you do in the book, you know, inner beauty. One of the things that we didn't talk about, which you do have in the book, is, is about what you call it more than a feeling, intuition. I love the conversation of intuition. Rarely have I seen it in a book that has to do with relationships. And I'm so grateful you've put it in here. Can you talk to the power of intuition in all of this? I would love to, because I think that intuition and feelings are so important to dating or, or any process. I've had people say they read the book and it helped them with a situation other than dating. Because if we don't tune in to how we feel, it's like we're disabling our GPS system, because this is helping us figure out how to navigate the world. And if we go, oh, yeah, I, I don't, I, I'm not really comfortable with this, but, you know, he might not like it if I do this, or my friends, you know, think I shouldn't do that or whatever, that, then are we sort of tuning ourselves out of the process? Yeah. And if we do that, we often don't get what, they, what we want. Now, maybe we need to refine it so that we're saying no in a way that is pleasant and isn't super angry, you know. Um, for example, I heard that from one man that some woman slapped him when uh, he opened a door for her. So that's extreme, right? You want to be able to say no in a way that, that's, right. you know, firm, but nice and not filled with a lot of anger. Just right. like, you know, I, I'm sorry, that's not going to work for me. And that's all it needs to be, really. But I think a lot of women can't do that. They feel they have no choice or they're afraid somebody's not going to like it. Mm. You know what's interesting about what you just shared? Um, this actually happened to me two mornings ago. Uh, I was walking into a very early morning meeting, and I was the first one at the door, and I saw two guys behind me, men, and I opened that door, and they walked right through that door. 
Now, I will tell you that that is a revolution right there because there were, were there was a time. And, you know, my sort of coming of age around, you know, issues that relate to me as a woman, where had I opened that door like that, and those two two, two guys were getting ready to come in, uh, we would have had a five-minute debate on whether or not <laughs> I should go in first or they should go in first, right? And you know what I mean. But today, there is a new level of acceptance out there. So what I'm kind of hearing you say is, yeah, there are more choices. Things are more accepting. But what about some healthy boundaries? Yeah, we need boundaries. And and because people want rules, they're not so comfortable figuring out what they want as individuals. Mm-hmm. We we do better with a cultural norm, but then that doesn't work for everyone. So that's why we've got to figure it out for ourselves. And and I'm not so sure it's terrible for a guy to open your door. In fact, it's kind of nice. I mean, wouldn't one of us open a door for some older person who maybe would have have a problem with it or just to do it to be nice? I mean, it, it's sort of like we've forgotten that people may just be doing these things to be nice. And it isn't a put down or it doesn't mean, you know, they're, they're criticizing us or saying we're weak. It's just they're being nice. And a lot of women feel like, you know, they can't ask their boyfriend for help because then they're not being independent. But it's like sometimes it's just nice for someone to help you with something. It yeah. doesn't have to be a political statement. Yeah, I think you said this earlier when we were talking about it. I think there's a level of confusion right now. And and I think that, you know, one of the things we can say about the previous sexual revolution, as we were referring to, is there was really no confusion. Lines were drawn in the sand for a very good reason. And, you know, we're talking with young people today that are like, what are you talking about, Pat? Uh, really? And right. they, most of them are working for us here. But the, the thing is, there was a time where the environment that you worked in was not respectful of you. And the only thing that you had that caused that was the fact you were a woman. And fast forward, we're not there. So what's happening, right? And, you know, you talk about this book. We have so many choices that we're confused about. Is he really being nice to me, Dr. Susan? Or uh, he must want something right there. Yeah. So so it's, if you don't tune in to how you feel mm-hmm. and don't try and have a little distance from whatever sexual chemistry is there, it can be very hard to navigate without rules. So that's what I think people need. And that's why I came up with these guidelines. So the guidelines, at least people have some kind of rules, are, you know, one, you always have a choice. Two, media and peer pressure solutions might not be right for you. Three, slow can be sexy. Four, your voice matters. And five, if a guy isn't respecting your voice, move on. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Um, I have uh, one last question for you. What's your personal message? What would you like to leave us with today? My message is no book or celebrity can know what's right for you, and your heart is precious, so you have to protect it. Wow. Thank you. For those of you out there, I just want you to know, um, if you've missed any part of this, we will put the entire show up later on today. The book is Be Your Own Brand of Sexy, A New Sexual Revolution for Women. Dr. Susan Edelman joining me here today. And um, if you want to find out more about how to get the book, find out more about Dr. Susan. It's really easy to do. And you can follow her on Facebook and Twitter if you go to the website, beyourownbrandofsexy.com. You can go ahead and go to Facebook and Twitter, just like I did. Follow her and let's support women in the sisterhood. We'll be right back. 